This tutorial describes the demand for loanable funds in a closed economy. So because the interest rate is going to be the cost of borrowing and also the return to lending in the financial market, we can better understand the role of interest rate in the economy by thinking about the financial markets. So to do this, we're firstly going to rearrange the national income accounts identity as such, where we have y minus c minus g is equal to i. So that is total income minus consumption minus government expenditure is equal to investment. And we can think of the term y minus c minus g as the savings rate. So given a certain amount of income, after the households have consumed everything that they will, and the government has consumed everything that they want, anything left over is essentially the savings that remain. And we can distinguish between savings in the private sector and savings in the public sector through the introduction of our tax identities in the lower equation. So we can rewrite the identity where consumers will save y minus t minus c and the government will save t minus g. So essentially, if household's income is greater than the total amount of tax taken from them and the total amount of consumption that they have, the proportion left over will be saved. The same logic applies for the government sector. If the government takes in more tax than it spends, then the government will save the residual or the leftover. So we say this is the sum of these two elements is equal to national savings, or S, and that this is actually equal to investment. So what we can see in the figure is that we have a given equilibrium interest rate. We have the downward sloping red line, which is the investment function. We have the upwards vertical sloping savings line. And what we see is that when savings equals investment, we are in equilibrium, and we have an equilibrium interest rate. We're going to do various manipulations to assess the impact of government policy on this. So firstly, we'll consider the impact of an increase in government purchases by delta G. So the immediate impact is to increase the demand for goods and services by that amount. But since total output is fixed in the economy, the increase in government purchases must be met by a decrease in some other category of demand. Because we're going to say disposable income, y minus t is unchanged, consumption is also unchanged. So the government is not financing this increased expenditure through taxation. Therefore, the increase in government purchases must be offset by a fall in investment. And to induce investment to fall, the interest rate must fall. But how does this occur? And where is the link with government purchases? So again, our starting point is our investment function and savings function, and we're in equilibrium at the interest rate R1. If the government chooses to increase its spending without increasing taxes, that must mean that it's taking this out of its savings. So it's reducing the amount of public savings. This results in a fall in the savings rate. So we see a shift from S1 to S2. At our given interest rate R1, we still have investment at the right-hand side. So investment demand is still here, if we can see the mouse cursor. However, the amount of savings which are available to loan is given by S2. Therefore, we have a situation where the demand for investment funds exceeds the amount of available funds which is given by savings. So the fall in savings initially results in demand exceeding supply. As in any instance where demand exceeds supply, the price will increase. So what we see is the interest rate rising from R1 to R2. So the shift in the savings curve has caused demand to exceed supply, the price of money, so our interest rate, to increase, and a new equilibrium to be reached where the investment function cuts S2 here. At this point, we can see that an increase in government expenditure has resulted in a rise in the interest rate and a subsequent fall in investment. So investment is now given where S2 cuts the horizontal axis as opposed to where S1 initially cut it. So we can see government purchases crowding out investment. We can further expand this model to discuss the impact fiscal policy on 
um, the demand for investment. So one reason why investment demand might change is due to technological innovation. The other could be due to tax incentives, which would increase the demand for investment. So we'll assume a technological in innovation in this instance. So suppose a new innovation such as a computer is introduced, and before a business or household can take advantage of the new innovation, it must buy the investment good. So thus we see an increase in investment demand. Again, starting with our equilibrium rate where we have savings cutting investment and we have our interest rate R1, when we see the introduction of a new innovation, this initially increases the desired investment. So it causes our investment or demand curve to shift out to the right. So we move from IR1 to IR2. At this point, we again have a situation where the demand, if we track down from our new circle here, exceeds the supply. As a result of this, we see a rise in the interest rate. So the interest rate will increase from R1 to R2, causing the new equilibrium to move up along the demand curve to here, where we have the demand for loanable funds equaling the supply of loanable funds again. So we see that we have higher demand for investment results in a higher interest rate.